Dear friends, good morning. I am Dr. Regina Linus, Associate Professor and HOD of Electrical Engineering Department at Sanjay Godavad University, Kolapur, Maharashtra. In this lecture, I am. This is the introductory lecture based uh, based on uh, the modeling of electrical machine. So I am planning to give a lecture the, uh, on YouTube modeling of electrical machine as well. So accordingly, in this introductory lecture, I would like to explain why we need to go for modeling of electrical machine. What are the importance of modeling of electrical machine? That is the main agenda of the today's lecture. So in this regard, I would like to present my white screen so that you can easily understand why we need to go for modeling the concept as well. I hope you can uh, see my screen. <coughs> So modeling and uh, modeling of electrical machine. This is the title. Today's lecture, we are going to understand why we need to go for this model. So, for example, assume our normal DC motor. So, DC motor have this input supply and armature resistance, and uh, this is a back EMF also. It will be there. Then connected to the main supply. So we can call this is that armature voltage. This is we can call armature resistance. Then we can call it as back EMF. This is the armature current. For mot motoring mode of operation, we can write armature voltage is equal to IA in the RA plus back EMF. Already we know back EMF nothing but K in the speed of the motor in RPS. Then torque of the motor, electromagnetic torque also we can write it as K in the armature current. So if you know this back EMF, if you know this, if you know this motor, uh, motor speed, you can find out this back EMF. So if you know the supply voltage, we can calculate this, we can treat this equation as equation number one. This equation of, from this equation number one, we can write it as armature current is nothing but VA minus EP divided by R. So, if you know the supply voltage, if you know the back EMF, we can, if you know, the, already we know the resistance, automatically we can find out armature current. So, if you know this armature current, we can find out this electromagnetic torque from this equation K into I. So, so this is what we, we used to study when we learn our BTEC courses, the basics of uh, machines, electrical machines, one uh, electrical machine, what DC machine. So this equation, only it will provide the steady state values. This equation, only it will provide steady state values. What is meant by steady state value? For example, assume that I am giving some uh, input voltage VA, and the motor speed is omega m 
that as the volt supply voltage is increases automatically motor seed will settle and the settle down increases and settle down to the rated speed of the machine so normal so we are only concentrating the steady state values what is the steady state values if we have the supply voltage if we know the back emf we can find out speed or otherwise we can find out uh, if you know this supply voltage if you know the current if we can find out this uh, speed as well so we this equations whatever may be the equations we have learned torque equation that supply voltage equation it will not give the information about how the speed is increasing for example the switch uh, we have i have connected one supply voltage like this and i have used to switch then armature resistance and vacuum assume this is the condition so this is the switch switch then this is the armature resistance this is a supply voltage armature voltage and vacuum so we know when the switch is closed supply voltage will be given to the motor when the switch is open supply voltage will be zero so that motor speed will come down so when we switch on and switch off how the speed of the motor is responding how the transient effect of the motor also if we change the load motor load here when the load is increases automatically armature current will increase so how the we can find out steady state values at the same time this equations will not help you how much current it how, how much time is required to uh, reach the steady state current and what are all the transient effects are there how the motor speed will be how the motor current will be how the electromagnetic torque will be the dynamic response these equations which will not help at all so but modeling of electrical machines is will help us when the load is changes how the speed transient how the current transient everything we can uh, we can come to the picture will it will be it will come to the picture so this is the main advantages of modeling of electrical machine so some sort of set of equation which will help us to analyze how the speed responds and how the torque responds and how the current respond based on the variation in the supply voltage and based on the variation in the load then next example i would like to explain the next example of induction motor we already know this induction motor induction motor this equivalent circuits we know that arm stator resistance and uh, stator reactance then uh, magnetizing circuits so we can write it as rm and uh, we can have it as xm so this is the magnetizing circuit so then again here stator rotor variables and load resistance so this is how this equivalent circuit of our normal standardized equivalent circuit of uh, induction mode so we have this is the stator supply voltage and this is the stator resistance and this is stator reactance this is rotor resistance referred to stator stator reactance referred to rotor reactance referred to stator then r r rotor dash in the 1 minus s by s so the slip s is nothing but synchronous speed minus rotor speed divided by synchronous we already know what is this uh, in terms of percentage and all we used to calculate in other when we do the load test and all so as we know two test in the sequence circuit block rotor test and open circuit test so no, no load test we call it as no load test in transformer we used to tell it as open circuit no load test so this no load test it will help us to find out what is the core losses so when the doing the no load 
test there is no ideally there is no current flow in this rotor only the current flow is in the stator so it will go going through this air gap so this is what we have that we can find out this core uh, losses core losses then block rotor test the block rotor test usually this armature this uh, resistance are more this impedances are more usually so the current will flows through this circuit uh, this load rotor resistance and the current will force to the rotor path so accordingly we can find out copper losses copper losses so then if we know this all the parameters also this uh, we can find out uh, copper losses or also if we from this equivalent circuit if we know this all the parameters we can easily find out what is the motor speed or uh, what is the slip of the motor everything we can find out moreover what is the secondary side voltage what is the torque equations and what is the torque steady state values we can easily find out by using the formula so at the same time as like i explained here you are seeing that one switch i have connected so if the switch is connected when the switch is open and what happens supply voltage it will not be flows to this induction motor so the speed will not increase so when the switch is closed the speed will increase so this type of infer when the the transient behavior of the induction motor will also be it is very difficult by using those formulas to find out the transient behavior especially when the load changes what about the current when the speed or supply voltage changes what about the voltage and how much uh, the peak overshoot of current how much the speed of speed response everything we cannot able to cannot able to analyze by using this steady state equations so but in modeling of it, modeling we used to understand the what is the rotor angle we as we will understand what is the speed of the motor then based on the speed supply how the speed is changing how the transient effect of the speed how the then the load is changing what is the electromagnetic torque effect what is the uh, armature current effect what is the rotor current effect everything we can understand by using this set of uh, by, by using uh, some set of equations in this modeling of electrical machine then this third example let me explain about synchronous generator synchronous generator normally the assume this synchronous generator is connected to this wind turbine connected to the wind turbine it is coupled with this uh, synchronous uh, generator synchronous generator we usually have some sort of variable speed control variable variable speed control then after that we have a dc link with the capacitor then we have inverter inverter to control the grid synchronization characteristics of the motor we will have a grid torch so we this inverter it will help us to synchronize this power feeding to the grid uh, power it will help us to feed the power to the grid so this variable speed it will track this maximum power of the wind turbine so in this case assume if there is any fault occur in this dc link side or grid aligned to ground fault occur during this time the speed will drastically come down maybe i don't know uh, what about current will drastically phase current will increase so how does phase current response similarly zero sequence already we have studied in power system analysis uh, zero sequence positive sequence and negative sequence component so uh, obviously if we have a line to ground fault automatically neutral is having zero sequence current how the effect of zero sequence current how the transient effect when this uh, when this uh, speed is increasing when the current uh, zero sequence current is increasing when the fault current is increasing then the what is a transient response of the system so normal synchronous machine uh, equations are example power is equal to supply 
voltage divided by xs into sin del we have already studied different equations of synchronous generator this type of equations it will not help us to analyze when the fault occur how the transient current how the uh, speed of the generator how the transient effect is how the variation based on the fault if nothing can be understandable by using this equation so that is the reason why people have uh, analyzed people have introduced this modeling of electrical machines so this modeling of electrical machines will help us to uh, <coughs> modeling of electrical vision it will help us to analyze the uh, analyze this uh, induction whatever may be the machine induction motor or uh, permanent magnetic synchronous motor or dc motor this system will analyze and it will produce the system response based on the it will produce the system response and we can we can understand that the system response and we can analyze it in the point of research oriented research point of view so i hope with this class today's introductory lecture i can close i can wind up so i hope it is very much interesting and it is understandable if you have a doubts kindly comment on it and uh, if you have any mistakes also you I, i am ready to correct kindly cooperate with us and uh, give some feedback also in the forthcoming lecture wish you all the best thank you